right guys, so anyway, today we're going to be talking a little bit about suspension setup, okay, and how you want to set up the suspension on your car to go autocross racing, actually time trial racing, all the types of racing as well. Uh, main thing is, with this kind of sport as far as autocross, is just have fun at it, okay? Don't go crazy, don't spend all of your money, uh, end up sleeping in the doghouse because you're building this car, just have fun with it. Start with your basic car, your street car going out there, give it a few runs, see what you think, see what other people tell you to do, and then move up from there, right? If you want to put coilover suspension on, cool, put coilovers on. If you just want to change out your springs, change out your springs. Uh, maybe replace the shocks with a set of Kony adjustables, something like that. Uh, throw some camber plates on and kind of do a piecemeal, piece by piece as you go along. Uh, as you get more competitive, obviously, then you want to step up to coilovers, uh, different types of trailing suspensions, all that kind of stuff. So today we're going to go through and I'm just going to kind of show you what I did on this car. So like I said, this one's a 95 Mustang uh, Cobra. And uh, this car runs in a class called Cam T, Classic American Muscle Traditional. Okay. And uh, we're just going to take a look at what I did on the suspension setup. And uh, like I said, I didn't go too crazy on it. It's a pretty low cost coilover system that I used, but it had all the features that I was looking for. So let's get into it. We'll take a look at what we got. Okay, so here we have a front uh, coilover setup, basically. Uh, so this one, like I said, it'll be slightly different, but they're all pretty much the same principle. Uh, basically, the shock body here. And it's fretted along here so that you can adjust the height of the actual ride of the car. So there's a spring perch here, and this is your spring here. Like so these are about 700-pound springs, uh, and you can adjust this going up or down as far as how high you want the ride height on the vehicle. Uh, same down here as well. Uh, as far as bolting them on, very easy. They bolt in pretty much in the stock location on any vehicle that you get. As far as adjusting the ride height, you're also going to get this kind of cool looking little spanner dealio here. And all it does basically is it locks into these pl places where those notches are. And then boom, you can adjust your ride height or anything else that you have to do. So let's just tighten this one up. That one's a little bit loose. And part of that's also because the car's jacked up. But anyway, here we go. Tighten her up. And this one here I've already tightened up as well, so it's good to go. So like I said, that gives you that much of a range as far as how high or low you can run the vehicle. So it makes it infinitely adjustable, basically. So pretty neat setup. Uh, rear ones are going to look pretty much the same for most vehicles. It's going to be the shock body with the spring riding over it. Uh, on this car, as I showed you, it's actually a little bit different. It's just the shock body with an independent spring behind it. But uh, that gives you an idea of what it looks like underneath there. Uh, the other components that you want to think about changing while you're here would be the sway bar. So here's your sway bar right here. Uh, on this particular car, the Cobras had a pretty darn big sway bar put on them originally, so I just left it on. Uh, the other component would be the bushings right here as far as your sway bar end links. You might want to replace those with urethane ones, and that's what these ones are on here. Um, as far as A-arms, all the cars have different A-arm setups. You can buy different A-arms, lighter ones if you want, but that's a lot of money getting into replacing ball joints, all kinds of other stuff. So anyway, what I would recommend, sway bar, go with a thicker sway bar, sway bar end links, and then a coilover shock setup. So part of the beauty about installing a set of coilovers on your car is basically adjustability it gives you. Here's what's called the top hat section right here. On here, there are some adjusting screws right here. There's two here, two here. You'd loosen, loosen these up and you can adjust basically the camber of the wheel as far as how the wheel goes side to side. So basically, uh, as the wheel, the top of the wheel comes in towards the center of the car and the bottom part of the wheel goes towards the outside of the car. And that's basically your camber setting. Uh, the other one you can do with these is you can also adjust a little bit as the caster setting as well. Uh, caster is how the wheel, how basically the strut goes down and the wheel goes forward and backwards, forwards and backwards. That basically helps you with a uh, uh, when you release the steering wheel, how the wheel returns back to center, that kind of stuff. Uh, the other one you can do on this one, these are adjustable. You can lift this up. There's a little valve right here, or a little knob, basically. You're going to turn it to adjust it to the setting that you want. Uh, as you go clockwise, it goes firmer, so the rebound's a lot harder. And as you go counterclockwise, it opens the valve up and it makes it a softer ride. Uh, for the way I set this car up is basically three clicks from the hardest setting, and that seems to work pretty good for most of the autocross running that I do. And so like I said, this under here also has a ball bearing set up. So the, as the wheel turns, it's nice and smooth in that turning. But this is the key part right here, 
is that adjustability as far as your camber. Uh, what do you want to set as your camber? Well, that's kind of up to you. Just get familiar with other cars that are racing in your class and uh, kind of ask those guys how they set theirs up. My particular car is set up at 2.5 degrees camber. Uh, as far as my toe-in, uh, toe-in isn't very much. It's between zero and I think 0 0.02 or something like that, so I don't have very much toe-in at all. You want to be careful with your toe-in. That leads to ex uh, you know, accelerated tire where the uh, more toe-in or the less toe-in you have because the wheels are basically kind of snow plowing down the road, basically. So just get it where it has a nice toe-in and just ask your alignment shop to set that up for you. But as far as camber... Uh, pretty much the rule of thumb is to try and get as much as you really can in, you know, don't go crazy, like, you know, seven or eight degrees, but, um, you know, two and a half, three, three and a half degrees is a good, goodly amount of camber. And, uh, like I said, that's one of the main advantages of running the coilover setup. These are called camber plates. You can get those if you're just running uh, regular shocks as well without running, uh, coilovers, if that's what you choose to do. Uh, so like I said, that's part of the best tip as far as autocross cars to have those good camber plates on there. Okay, so here what we have is how we did the uh, coilover setup on an SN95 Mustang. Uh, they're all going to be pretty similar in a way. Uh, difference on this one is we still use the old spring perch uh, back there. And uh, just to put the, f basically that's an adjustable spring perch that goes up or down to adjust how high or low you want the rear suspension to ride. Uh, the springs on this one, I think were like 700 pound springs or something like that. Uh, this one here is basically the actual shock assembly. So as you can see, just goes up to its original mounting position. Uh, this one's also adjustable as far as that sleeve system right there as well for ride height and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much how the rear end goes on a lot of them. This whole spring and the shock assembly is gonna be kind of combined together uh, kind of like a traditional looking strut, basically, that you'd mount in the back. But anyway, that's the type that we have set up on this particular car. And it uh, works pretty darn well. So as far as adjustability, uh, this is how you adjust the rebound, basically, setting on the shock. Uh, this little knob right here, just twist it. And usually it's uh, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Uh, since this one's just a dedicated race car, I can go three detente from full tight. So two, uh, two, three. Right there is usually where I kind of set it on this car. As you rotate those little knobs, you'll feel a little detente in there. And that just gives you kind of where the setting is. And that's kind of how you adjust the rear uh, shock rebound or dampening. So there you go, folks. That's pretty much what I wanted to show you as far as some tips as far as doing the uh, suspension setup on your autocross car. Like I said, don't go crazy. Don't spend tons of money. Just find out if you even like the sport first and then go from there. Maybe just throw some springs on, throw a couple of sway bars on front and rear. Maybe do those sway bar end links, see what you think. As you get better, progress through the sport, or you want to get a little bit more competitive, switch over to the coilover suspension setup. So remember, put it on, take it to an alignment shop, get that good camber, two and a half degrees, three and a half degrees, whatever you can get away with. And uh, you know, just go for it. Just have fun. And uh, like I said, it's a fun sport. You'll have a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully we'll see you out there. Probably next time when I next time see you, uh, let's see, what should we work on? Let's take a look at some of the interior stuff on the car as far as setting up the interior on the car a little bit as well. And uh, we'll also talk a little bit about tires as well and um, differences in some of the tire compounds. All right, guys, have a good day, and we'll talk to you later.